Lazarus. I run the design firm out in Portland, Oregon. Uh, looks like everybody's having a great Monday morning already in chat. If you are on YouTube watching, come on over to Behance so that we can actually engage with you and I'll be reading chat from here. So please come on over, be part of the community and hang out. Uh, Tim, Sean, Carol, Emily. Welcome, Emily. I see this is your first time on Behance Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know you are in for a treat. You're gonna have a lot of fun today. We are working on like a luxury candle flower brand thing. It's a personal project. It's just gonna go in our portfolio. So it can be really whatever we want. We kind of focused it really on like a flower brand yesterday. Again, lowers levels. There we go. There we go. This is better. Sorry guys, the audio thing. Who would have known? Always an issue. <laughs> All right, we're good now, though. It should be good if I can turn it up just a little bit more. Get it into y'all ears. There we go. There we go. Let me know if that's still too low or not, but we should be good. Carol, good to see you again. How is everybody doing? Shauna, I see you guys. Better? Perfect. Awesome. Good to see that. Well, so anyways, back to kind of recapping what we were working on. We're doing like a luxury candle slash flower brand. Yesterday, we really focused it on flowers, but really you could work it for anything. So we're, we're kind of just working with uh, looking at my current portfolio. Uh, follow me on Behance if you'd like. Uh, I do a lot of like photography work within all my brand case studies so that I can really build out a unique and interesting portfolio piece. Um, and looking at my portfolio, I noticed that I don't really have as much luxury stuff. I have a lot of like skate, graffiti, kind of like street inspired work. And I think that lends itself to the color palette that I typically use, which is like more vibrant, bold, kind of in your face, um, and a lot of like bold uh, sans serif type faces. So I'm starting to try to like diversify my portfolio a little bit. So I want to do um, like a bold kind of wonky serif type face. We already did like, Last time we did Adobe Live, we did uh, these like beautiful hot sauces that we ended up using Dimension and Illustrator for. But I want to do something that's a little bit more ir like irreverent, I guess. Uh, this is like a nice like high end kind of project, I think. Like it lends itself to that. But I want to do something that feels a little bit more like counterintuitive. So I want to flip kind of the strips, the script a little bit on it. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is build a flower slash luxury brand. Uh, we worked on this logo yesterday. We're gonna go through brand guidelines in a bit. Uh, so we ended up exploring a bunch of things. We only have an hour today. Uh, we had an hour yesterday. So this is really, really fast. We're trying to get like spinning up new collateral, new pieces really, really fast to build like a brand and a brand toolkit that you might be able to present to your clients. Uh, and I'll kind of explain throughout this process how there's not a perfect direction all the time. There's not like one stra like strategic approach for every client project. So adapt, be flexible, you'll be fine. Uh, this is really for you guys. So if you have any questions along the way, please let me know. Uh, we're gonna go over color, illustrator, we're gonna be doing the brand toolkit in there. So some guide stuff, some just kind of best practices. So if you have any questions, please ask. I'm happy to answer them, whether it's how to deal with clients or how do you present this stuff or whatever you want. I'm here for you. Welcome, Mark. How are you doing? It's like Laz isn't right in the studio with you. Perfect. Good, Shauna. That's how we want it to be. Uh, so anyways, so yesterday we made this kind of different explorations around Perianth, which is the name of our fictitious project that we're working on. Uh, and then I ended up this morning looking back at the logo and the logo was, um, like this, where the H descender was at the baseline. And I felt like that wasn't really like, 
it didn't like kind of re um, it didn't complement the P as much. So I just brought it down to match the baseline of the P. And I think that's kind of an interesting play where it kind of feels like it's balanced on both sides. Uh, and so I did a little quick mock up earlier of just like what this could look like within like um, like a newsletter or a magazine cover. And like this, honestly, the scale for this logo, I feel like is just too large. So I'd probably bring it down a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. And then I'd probably just rest it on top of that. I think by downplaying the size sometimes, it allows people to like, there's like a quote that's about speaking to people. And if you're yelling at somebody, they kind of like shy away from it. And I'm kind of taking that approach where if you whisper, people typically lean in to you. So think about that whenever you're like designing, think about those like motifs you can carry over. So with this, I think downplaying the logo a little bit kind of creates more interest and people might be more engaged by looking at it rather than like a gigantic logo that's in your face and just spans the full bleed. I mean, that's kind of cool too, but I think leaning into the, the smaller logo might feel pretty nice. Um, so anyways, we're gonna be going over the brand toolkit stuff today. So if we have, so I'll show you some examples kind of to start. Uh, so this is kind of when I explain that brand toolkits and brand guidelines that you present to a client or give to them to be successful, it really depends on the client. It depends on the product and the kind of work that you're doing with them. Here's an example of like doing like a web style guide and like brand guidelines, all in one document for a client that I did, which was Atticus. And if you've seen it on my portfolio, you'll notice that uh, this logo, the one that I really like, is not necessarily the one that they chose. And this is kind of the original like brand guidelines for them was kind of leaning into explaining exactly how the logo works and why it is what it is and how you can use it throughout their collateral. Uh, and so that's got like a lesson. If you guys are liking um, a logo or something like that and a client doesn't necessarily like it, it's okay. You can still put that in your portfolio. Just make sure that you have in your contracts explanation around that you can do that stuff. Like I have in my contracts that all my iterations, if they are final or not, can go into my portfolio because I think this work is really good and I want the world to see it because I want more clients that like that style. So uh, just going back to this tangent here. So in this like little web style guide and stuff, hold on, Jose asks, hi Alex, how are you doing? How do you get payments from customers? I get payments from my customers either through credit card or check or PayPal and stuff like that. It really just depends on the client and, and all that stuff. I decided, Jose, that we will not, I won't be just sharing out a brand toolkit publicly because I think it really depends on the client. I was trying to figure out, okay, if I was somebody watching the stream, I don't want you to feel like my way is the only way to do things. And so I didn't want to give you a toolkit that says do these things because I don't think that's helpful to you and I don't think it's helpful to your client. I think you should make it your own. So I'll explain how I did this one for Atticus and then we can make our own together. And you can kind of lean, you'll like, hopefully by the end of this hour, we'll have a better understanding of how you can make your own presentations that feel really interesting and unique to clients. So for me, I hate seeing like brand guidelines that are like, don't do logo like this, don't do logo like that, don't skew it, don't flip it, don't do those things. Like, I feel like everybody should know this stuff right now, but like some clients really want the like do's and don'ts. So you can do that. I personally don't think that are that helpful because I feel like if anybody's gonna skew your logo, or change it or adjust it or just break it anyways, they're gonna break it to begin with. So uh, really depends on what you agree with your client. So anyway, so this is just goes black and white logo, goes straight into color palette, starts to explain the font families. And because this was a web style guide also, I get under the nitty gritty within uh, line spacing, line heights, H1s, H2s, H3s, paragraph text as well. This is very, very granular, right? Like this is very, 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 very granular. Shauna says, everybody should know this. Oh, you would be surprised. I I know, I know. Like, I mean, yeah, it, I don't know. I, I People will still break it, right? Like even if you put it into a document, 
people are still going to break your guidelines. Like, it, just because you say don't do these things doesn't mean, unless you have a really complicated logo. I've worked with some clients in the past that have had logos that were kind of off center or something like that. Then building like guidelines around how to use a logo that vi needs to be visually balanced versus like metrically balanced, that makes more sense, right? Uh, but see that you can kind of see through this example that this is for your web style guide. Here's how H1s can look, here's the variations. And what, the great thing about working with an illustrator is I used to really love building all my websites within Illustrator especially for like vector graphics, like it's such a great way of building your files out. And then I could just quickly pull them across and have all my H1s, H3s, all that stuff built out. I used to work with a bunch of people that used to work in InDesign for this exact reason, where you could just have H1s, H3s, all that stuff, all the way built out inside your text and paragraph styles. So you essentially just export the website and you can separate out the images really quickly. So. There's a lot of Adobe tools that you can use to build your websites, and there's no wrong or right answer. Uh, but feel free to use XD as well if you want. Uh, so yeah, you kind of like to see like button states, everything gets really, really granular. Talks about, you know, this is a really great way to like send it over to development. You can get into like the grid systems, baseline grids, like, overlays showing how like sections could work, getting into navigation, all that stuff. So this is very, very heavy, uh, as you can tell by my kind of document being kind of floating around. But you can see, very heavy, very specific, very rich. Uh, we're not gonna be doing that craziness today. Uh, and Tim says, yeah, it might be a bit obvious for us, but if you're the client who hired you because they don't know how to design, it might not be. Yeah, I mean, I, I I guess I've just gotten to the point in my career where I don't have to deal with those clients that are gonna take what I did and break it. I think, like I said, if they're gonna break it, they're gonna break it. They're not gonna look at the document and be like, hmm, you know, like, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I just have too much faith. <laughs> That's okay, it's part of the process, right? It's like whatever whatever empowers the client to do their best work is what I wanna solve for them. All right, so we got this logo. We got this beautiful little monogram. Boop. So we got the like the two finals are here. And so I know I think Jose was asking yesterday about color. So I can get, show you guys kind of quickly how I would go about building color. Um, and like I said yesterday, I kind of want this to be flexible because it's for my own brand. But I understand that that's not completely helpful for learning how to do it. I love to have like really flexible design systems to work with. Oh my goodness, my computer. Let's go. It needs a pep talk sometimes. This is so slow. <laughs> All right, go. Cool. Uh, <laughs> now that it's got its coffee. All right, so I'm gonna actually just take these elements. I like the, the orange, it's kind of, Oops, I like the orange. I'm gonna grab probably three. How many colors do you guys want today? I could throw this here. Maybe say like, okay, we got these like, kind of darker. Let me throw this behind here. Command F to paste in place. All right, so what we're gonna do is actually, why is my computer running so slow today? Let's see, we can throw in maybe this gray. All 1,867 1, solid Pantone colors. Perfect, we'll get started on that right now. I'm sure my computer will have no problem with that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to here once we selected these three color palettes. We can actually just make it a little bit smaller. Maybe that'll help with the rendering. All right, so we're gonna click the Edit Color Wheel or Recolor Artwork tab. And what we're gonna do is we can actually individually edit each one if we want, which probably not gonna do right now from the start. 
So what we can do is recolor artwork. We can actually look at the um, edit wheel, sorry, the, uh, the harmony rules up here. And then <laughs> that will help you kind of decide what you want to do. So we've got different color palettes we can choose from to begin with. So if we like that, that's fine. Uh, or we can just edit this one color. We can go to the color wheel and we can just spin things around. So if I want to like bring it in, I can do that. I can increase the brightness. I can decrease the darkness, all that stuff. How did you decide on those? I decided on them because I just clicked them. Yeah, it was pretty much that. <laughs> it was pretty simple. It was no like crazy color theory or anything like that involved. Uh, I'm just looking at my current portfolio, which is very br bright and vibrant and very much in your face. Uh, and I'm trying to go with like more of a darker tones and a little bit more of like earthy bits. Since it's for packaging, does it influence your choice? Uh, not particularly. Um, obviously, depending on how I'm going to package them or all those things will, you know, making sure it's print ready. Yes, but at the end of the day, like at the start of my process here, I want it to be very open and there's no kind of like incorrect answers right now. As we start to like shift into like, okay, now what does this print look like? Then um, then I will start dialing it into print ready colors and choices like that. But depending on the print technique, they can get so close to digital that I'm not really worried about it. So. I'm actually going to go in here. I'm going to increase this. Shana says, I like the jewel tones you've got, you had going. Yeah, we can like bring it back into the, that spectrum a little bit. So like we can go like, I don't know. What, do, what colors are you guys feeling today? We can go, I like, It's like we're back to the maroon and <laughs> bright blue again, but this is what I do all the time. So I'm trying to contrast what I normally do, which is obviously using this blue. So I'm gonna grab this again, go back up to the edit color wheel, go back to edit. And then I should be able to, let's see here, we can do complimentary. Let's do triad. I'm gonna bring the darkness down. So you can see how this starts to like give you some like interesting triad color palettes to begin with. It's like a really quick way of kind of like making sure that your 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 colors are kind of color theory correct, if that makes sense. You don't always have to, rules are meant to be broken, so you can break them as you see fit, but. I guess that's the main takeaway for today's <laughs> rules are meant to be broken and if you build the guidelines they might break them these are like all way too pastel so let's get a oh, blue in the correct kind of color vein that we're thinking Not liking any of these right now. All right, we might just freestyle it now, but that's an easy way to do it. I liked the orange. We can pull from even the images that we're using. We could probably try to just optically match that a little bit more. We'll grab a darker blue. So by doing this, we have a nice contrast between these two here. So that's kind of nice. I think what we'll do is probably do like kind of a mono chromatic approach maybe. The maroon and orange were cool. I like them too. 
Yeah, it's looking nice over here. So yeah, maybe we'll just grab this, throw this down here. The maroon's nice. I like having the orange to kind of add a pop of color. And they do a really good job of like kind of balancing each other out and increasing contrast. What we can also do is, what you can do if you want to get really, really granular is you can actually take like these four colors and you can take whatever color you think is kind of the brand color. Uh, so like say that this is like this blue here, maybe there's, you know, three shades of blue. So maybe we need to have this and then I'll grab this here by pressing I, get the eyedropper, and then you can pull that in. So maybe this is feeling too out of the spectrum right now. What you can do is, oops, Command F, place it back in. All right, I'm gonna Command C, Command F. I'm gonna span it across these. And what you can do by doing this is actually change the opacity down to like lighten, and you can just bump it down to like 4%, 5% if you want. And what you'll do there is you can like screenshot this. And then you can bring it in. Into Illustrator again, or in Photoshop if you want. And then you can start to make your own. Bear with me. Bear with me, chat. We're doing it. So by doing this, now I have a unified color palette that is feeling more consistent because it has, oh my gosh, I did the wrong thing. So by doing this, what we've done is essentially brought the whole color palette into having kind of more consistent tones throughout it, the whole thing. See how that already feels more like consistent across the board by just taking a main color and just bringing those hues into the other colors. It's kind of an interesting way of bringing that together. So Emily says, how do you apply the target customer for the brand and picking a color? For example, the candle company selling to the men, women or men, uh, age group, income, etc. That seems challenging in our projects. Um, that's a great question. I would say that candles have the luxury of like being kind of, you can allow candles to be black and white and it'll be kind of gender neutral and it works in everybody's environments and houses and everything. Uh, so I think for this, like if I really wanted to, like if you look at like uh, Diptyque and all these other like high quality, very famous, like candle companies, like they just have like a monogram for their candle and it just sits on a counter, right? I think if you did very color heavy, if you did really color heavy, like candle uh, holders and things like that, I think that's where you start to like alienate certain consumers. So I think looking at it, look at what like luxury brands are doing. Um, so like if you look at like Tom Ford or anything like that, like look at those, like even Vice uh, did their whole like high, low, high fashion, uh, low, what do they call it? They, got, they called it high versus low, which was like high fashion versus low, um, low quality slash like unbranded content and stuff. So it's, uh, I think you can't go wrong with black and white. If you start doing color, you need to start thinking about like, Regions even think about like what what that means for consumers. Test it. You can ask people what they think on it, but it depends on really what you're trying to go for for your brand. If it's you know, I don't know how to explain that easily. <laughs> it really just depends. 
depends on your whole entire approach, who you're trying to target, what do they expect, what are their typical shopping behaviors, what feels natural for them. Cool, so we can test this poster really quick. So I don't really like these two over here, by the way. It's just not feeling good. So that's looking pretty good. You might wanna just explore what these look like. We can do a little bit more simple. So for the actual toolkit itself, what we're gonna do, let me just, oops. So we've got just a really, really simple toolkit. So for example, so we're gonna look at it as kind of like, this is not a what you absolutely have to do, but typically this is kind of like the basics that you could put in there. So for the brand toolkit, intro slide, great. Have a title of the deck. Uh, always make sure you have a contents, like a table of contents or an index for your projects. It helps people just navigate everything. Uh, how to use this document is extremely, extremely helpful. <laughs> you like the Florum Ipsum sneeze we Peruvian lily? Yeah, that's uh, that's Tim's beautiful work from yesterday. How do you get logos, trademark, or copyright? Uh, that's a great question and one that I can't answer for you. You need to go through like getting them actually trademarked or copyrighted during for legal, like from a lawyer. Uh, but like from a creative perspective, if you did it and you posted it on the internet and showed your process or whatever, you technically already own the copyright. So if somebody already took it from you. You don't have to like go through a huge like legal process to, to do that. Like anything that's on my portfolio is mine and it's copyright under me by default. All right, so how to use this document is extremely helpful for framing how to use the deck. So put some content in there that explains either the premise or the purpose of the document. If it's gonna be very, uh, if it's very technical, then say it's very technical and this is how you're supposed to do it. Uh, I always like to put like, these are general guidelines versus absolute must do's, must haves. So then logo, monogram, we can put it in. Let's grab it real quick actually. So even within the monogram section, if we wanted to, we could get pretty granular and start talking about even like favicons, put a little explainer in there. We could get into the like spacing sections, but like, again, you can kind of like take the spacing kind of approach and build guidelines around, like don't break these areas always have a safe zone. But like, meh. The Florum Ipsum page, that's where you can find all the full Florum Ipsum. I would love to, oh my gosh. Is that really a thing? Oh my goodness. Oh, I thought you made that up yourself. <laughs> That's amazing. Well done, Tim. Well done. All right. So we'll blow this up for this section here. Boom. Boom. And then we'll probably do like a, I don't want to get too granular and just like spending tons of time uh, 
putting content in. But let's see here. 16 by 16 is what a favicon should be, right? 16. So for a favicon, think about it. 16 by 16 or 32 by 32 is typical favicon sizes. I'm gonna actually just expand the shape real quick. But knowing that the favicon is not gonna translate well to uh, like having the circle with the monogram, I'm just gonna just remove the circle and keep it nicely in the box. Boom, boom, cool. Grandfather Ipsum. There's also a Samuel L. Jackson Ipsum. In case you guys needed that in your life. I think it's called Slipsum or something. So that's a favicon. We got into the monogram. Oh, I don't need the monogram page anymore. But what we can do is say, we can do We can pull this. I think this is already saved, so let me just pull it in. Get the mock up. So I made a little uh, enamel pin as well. And what you can do to like make your projects a little bit more streamlined is just import the PSD directly into uh, your Illustrator just so it feels a little bit more, uh, it, whenever you're editing and saving, it'll just constantly update whenever you relink the files. Uh, we can also do a boop. Sorry, my computer is like being slow today. It's like slowing down everything just a little bit. All right, so we got black and white. We can always use like a, a little bit of a. Uh, do. Oof! Come on, computer. Let's do white logo. I'm just gonna pull this up real quickly. Is everybody having a good Tuesday so far? I know it's like 8 a.m. on the west coast of the US. All right, so I got black logo, white logo. Move this down. And now I'll pen. Just name it. I don't know why, but the last word is getting cropped out while entering. Are you in Illustrator doing that? Maybe you need to, you might have a, let me see here. So if your like bounding box is too tight, you might be pressing enter and that might be getting stuck below. You see, it? and if it has that red dot, you can either double click on it and pin and make a second text box and it'll kind of go to that section or just decrease or increase the, the text height. Shauna says, I finished two big deadlines yesterday. I'm working on a gift this morning and we'll be skating a little later. So yeah, so far so good. That's awesome. How's this new skates treating you? Pretty exciting. That's awesome. I am so jealous that you get to skate right now.
So now we got a little monogram, 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 monogram. Uh, favicon, I'll move this guy over. For this document, I don't like the size of the favicon, so I'm just going to move it over and just say favicon versus and make it bigger. Versus saying, you know, this is exactly how it needs to be at 16 by 16. It's like, well, it'll be fine. I'll export it for a client, you know, and they'll get it. Same old working on content and more content. Get that grind going, Alberto. Keep it going. It's exciting. Ooh, how did that not? Okay, let's just. All right, so we got these guys. Now we'll just grind it up. Boop, boop. So now they're all even. So. When you're aligning things, it's a great way of just aligning your content. You can always make your guides, and we kind of showed guides yesterday, but if you just take your bounding box and you find where you want your content to kind of live within the page, you can just center it. So right here at the, on the, there's a line tools here, and you can just center to the artboard, or you can center it in your content, the selection tool. So this is a really great way of just really quickly aligning everything in your in your table. What you can do with this is you can either keep this live with the guide and just keep it like cyan or something, magenta, whatever you want. Uh, or you can actually just make this a guide. So if I wanted to, I could take this guide and just command C and then go to the next artboard, command F and it'll just paste in the artboard each time, every time I select an artboard. So click on the new artboard, Command F, throughout the whole process. What you can also do is just take those and then take a right click on it and then click Make the Guides. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remastered Demo is out. Does it count as skating? Is that really out? Really? Already? Demo? Not the full game? Oh no. We can't talk about video games, people. Get me too excited about Cyberpunk and then we derail the whole stream. Cannot do it. Alright, so color palette, what we're going to do is we're going to take what we got originally. I think it's also like, you can also take this. There's no real, like, you must only have three corporate colors, there's, you know, or this amount of grays and stuff. I think. You should, uh, Nick Hill, you asked, how do you pick your colors? Uh, we just kind of went over that at the beginning of the stream. So after the stream is over, go back to the beginning of it, or you can kind of, I guess, reverse it now, maybe. Is that even a thing? Yeah, you can, if you just go over, you can start back at the beginning. We'll t talk about it there. Alberta says, yeah, demo is out if you pre-order digital games, comes out September 4th. Oh, that's right, it comes out soon. It's August 18th. Huh, I would have known. Uh, so keep that in mind. You don't need to have like a certain amount of colors. You can do one color for the brand if you want, or you can get super crazy with it. And you can have hundreds. No, don't do hundreds. That's a lot. But essentially the color palette itself should just be there to empower clients to whatever the content type is that they're doing. The, co the color palette should help that, right? If it's a website, probably having error states, caution states, and active states is a great way to think about it, right? So, so we can keep these if we wanted the backs and whites and do, just bring the color palette in. Always whenever you're building your color palettes or your brand guidelines, um, always do hex, RGB, and CMYK. If you wanna get crazier with it, if you know your client might be doing print, uh, doing Pantone color references is also helpful. Just really depends on the client, but it's always great. <laughs> but I would not recommend scrubbing back because you tend to forget you're on a delay. It's true. Don't do it. Don't scrub back. Just hang out with us now and then go backwards in time later. You can try and travel. So if I wanted to, if I like that blue a lot, I could start 
building out kind of like shades of the blue and knowing like okay maybe I want like a cooler gray color palette for the rest and then make sure that your color palette is legible like your if nobody can read the typeface because it doesn't work on the it doesn't contrast on it then your guidelines are useless. You've got to make sure people can read them and actually use them if you're going to spend the time to, to build them all out. See if I can pull in a, like a little bit cooler, lighter. Oops. Let me grab this. And then we'll do just like maybe a white. And you don't have to do a pure white if you don't want. Some some businesses don't don't need it. Like it's nice to have a pure white for like websites and stuff, but even then like you can sometimes you could get off with like a, a small little like lightly off white. And just helps kind of bring the whole thing together. So I'm not gonna get into like the whole granular, like let's do uh, actual RGB and hex values for these things, but let's see here. Maybe there's a, there should be enough variation here now that a client should feel pretty empowered. I'm just pulling it from the, the maroon as a starting point. Uh, I'm using the maroon as a starting point and then dialing it up if I need to or dialing it back. This is too similar. Let's see here, let's pull it in. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. I see your true colors shining through. All right, Tim. All right. Well done, Tim. <laughs> I love the dad jokes. Love them. So good. So I'm just like, as soon as I find the color palette that's working for me, I'm just moving them over slightly, get the values in. This is also too close to some of the other ones, so let's see if there's another one we might want. I don't think, I think that orange will probably stay as an accent color and not stay as like part of the main brand. Something like that, I think could work. So that's like a color pot. What is the topic of the session? We're just knowing like, how to build a brand really quickly, how to build like all the little elements that you might need for a like brand toolkit. I typically like to show examples mostly in my brand toolkit. So I might pull in like this mock-up just so I can show them the client. This is how you can use things. Uh, we're building like a luxury, like lifestyle slash candle slash uh, flower brand, like a flower shop. So I might just pull this off right now. Actually, no, I'll leave that there. Uh, boop. I'm going to place this in the background. So what I'm going to do here is actually going to use, I'm going to show you guys how to crop in Illustrator. So what I can do is a couple different ways. I can go take this image that I've got here, and I can click Crop Image. But this is destructive, so I don't really like using it. Uh, destructive meaning like, you can't edit it after you've already used it. So I could crop it like that if I want. And that'll crop to the screen. That's fine. But I don't want that right now. I want to be able to edit this in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just make my marquee. I'm going to press M, grab the marquee tool. 
and I'm going to grab and make a rectangle that fits the size of the screen. I'm going to make it black. Bella says, I took a picture of my room and loved it, captured the colors from my logo, came out perfect. That's awesome. I love that. Using a Adobe Capture, I think that's the software for it, is a great way to grab your own color palette, find stuff that resonates with you. Um, absolutely amazing. So what I did was I made this black rectangle, put it over this image behind it. I'm going to do a select both of them by shift clicking both. And what I'm going to do is go to this the transparency properties. I'm going to click mask, make mask. You can also right click and make a mask. And then I'm going to invert mask here. And now you've got this beautiful cropped image. So what I can do because I'm selected on here is I can actually just move it up. Oops. I'm going to unlink it. I'm going to move it up. So I can have this beautiful screenshot kind of centered as I want. And then I'm going to relink the mask again and double click out of that. Just going to make it a little bigger. All right, so now if I want, I can say, OK, now I've got this little description here. I'm going to actually just move this over. I think by me doing this, excuse me, I've found that clients are more receptive to it by me saying, OK, here's examples of how to do this really well. And the great thing about doing it this way is you're building out work that will go directly into your portfolio, even if it doesn't get used this way, right? But you're saying, oh, this is a really interesting way of doing it on a mock-up or uh, using an enamel pen or something like that. You're like, great, I already have everything I need to make a Behance case study. Luke Finch, what up? How are you doing? Welcome to chat this morning. Uh, just trying to catch up on chat. All right. Okay, that's good. All right, so more examples. Let's see here, what else we got? So I made these mockups, and essentially, really quickly, what you guys can do, let me see if I've got examples. So if I wanted to, I'm gonna pull this into Photoshop really quickly. I've got this candle that I just got from Unsplash, so it's already just a stock photo we can use. We don't have to worry about licensing or you know any of the issues that come with that. Really quickly, taking these ideas or concepts, you guys can grab this little patch tool if you want, depending on the, or how it is. Just, I'll show you a couple different ways. You can just patch out these letters. Boom. Boom, pow. I know we're not doing like a Photoshop tutorial today, but these are great ways of just quickly making your mock-up for your brand book. Do it like this. Boom, pow. Look at that. Gone. Gone. Who's tuning in from a Mac? I want a Mac. All right, what you can also do is you can just grab it with a marquee tool or whatever, and then you can go edit, edit image, uh, edit fill. So go to edit fill, and then do content aware fill. And then I'll just automatically find the content that you need for it. So by doing this, you're going to be creating a bunch of different little mockups really quickly for yourself that will both make your portfolio really cool and also present really well to a client. So what I can do is just grab this really quickly, grab the logo. Or if I wanted to, maybe the monogram. Monogram could be cool. Don't forget, whenever you are in Photoshop, and I don't want to spend too much time on it because I know we're working in Illustrator today, you're going to want to like warp it and make it kind of fit the, the, the object that you're working on. Uh, Peppa Warp, Perspective Warp, Free Transform. Oh, it's because I'm working on a smart object. I do is rasterize layer, and then I should be able to warp it a bit. I don't want to spend too much time on it again because we're working in Illustrator today. But, uh, but I do kind of want to show you like how you can do it. So you can start pulling it in. Boop, 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 boop. It's pretty ugly right now. But use the warp tool. You can get it kind of bent around this object. Wow. 
great, beautiful. All right, it's awful looking, but <laughs> you get the gist for that one. So what I did was I essentially, this one was also from Unsplash, and what I did was I took it off the, um, it had like Adidas logos and everything on it. So what I did was I essentially just took that whole concept, uh, patch healing tool, and made the, the paper bag look original. So now what we can do is actually just take the logo and what we can do is post it in, smart object, bing pow, boom bing pow, try to match it with the perspective. We can actually just throw it at the bottom maybe. Something like this. And what I'll do is rasterize it. Uh, rasterize layer really, really quickly. We're gonna run out of time, but so what I'm gonna to try to do really quick, edit, rasterize, perspective warp, get the perspective kind of dialed in a little bit more. It's a little off still, but you kind of see that. What I'll do also sometimes is I'll take it, darken, I'll actually lower some of the, the opacity on it. And then what you do really to make your photos Photoshop look like it's part more because look at how much grain there is in the noise on this image. What you'll do is double click on there. Actually, sorry, filter noise, add noise. And what I'll do is I'll try to add as much noise as what's happening in the image. And see, look at that. That looks so much more natural and part of that image already. And now people can see, oh, that, that looks like it's actually really part of the, the bag. So. That is a great way to kind of build out these these elements into your your brand deck, and fill out like, explain this is how you use things versus saying oh like don't do this don't do that. Here's actually great ways of actually doing it. Then they'll just kind of mimic or copy those kind of examples that you've done in the past. Uh, so we can just throw those in. I like to put in a bunch of different examples throughout the deck. Um, that way everybody feels like. They got a good salt for the business cards. Uh, what does it look like on the website, their Instagram? I do all those mock-ups so that they can kind of see it playing out. I'll build guides for kind of every touch point that their business might have. So we can pull that down. But I know we're almost out of time. So if you guys have any final last questions, I'm happy to answer. Here. I can just pull this out. Command X, Command F to paste in place in front. Hey Anna, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream this morning. Hope your Tuesday is off to a great start. And then we can throw in multiple different concepts if we need to. Woo. Turbo Squid has a couple of free candle models, the unused dimension to add the logos. Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, use whatever tools you have available to you. Adobe probably, I haven't even checked Adobe stock, but they probably have plenty of candle mockups that we could leverage. What I'm gonna do is actually just paste this behind, Command X, and then Command B, or Control B, to paste the object behind. That way you can kind of have two different mockups all on one screen, and then whenever you're presenting to a client, all they see is kind of, let's see here, view, presentation mode, you can kind of see, whenever you're presenting to a client, they can see exactly what it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yes, you can, perfect. So you can kind of walk them through, here's how to use your logo, here's best practices, here's how it looks on some collateral. If you're gonna do these things, this is the best way to make it look really great. Uh, and Carol, like yours, oh, you're right. Yeah, wrapping your logo is kind of a pain. So if you can use Dimension to proof out a concept, or a candle, it's the best way to go about. But we are out of time today. So check out the schedule today. 
You've got video work with Justin, Jason, Voodoo Val's doing Creative Challenge, Hand Lettering with Rihanna, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julia, Web Design with Pablo Stanley, XD with Peter Del Tondo, and Design in the Dark with Jordan and Andrew Hockrattle. You guys are in for a very, very exciting Tuesday. You guys are going to have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. Can't wait to see you guys again soon. And hope you guys have an awesome, awesome rest of your August. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.